Ripple's $1 billion fine from the SEC has been revealed by the most recent development, which has exposed the reasons why the attorney for XRP believes that Judge Torres would not enforce the sanction. The judge is likely going to throw out the fine, which is expected to be significantly more than $2 billion. What comes to mind when you think of this recent occurrence? The causes for the SEC weakness have been criticized by attorneys for XRP. This latest occurrence is extremely encouraging for XRP because it indicates the beginning of a sustained rising trend towards cryptocurrency. What are some of the ideas that you have regarding it? James Murphy, a lawyer who advocates for XRP and is known by his stage name, Meta Legal Guy believes that Judge Torres would not grant the security exchange's proposed punishment of $2 billion against Ripple. Should this occur, XRP would have emerged victorious from a significant conflict and the trend would be shifting in a bullish direction. According to the Securities and Exchange Commission, institutional investors who paid a lower discount for XRP were charged an inflated price which resulted in a loss of financial resources for these investors. The allegation made by the SEC that institutional investors had incurred financial losses was called into question by Murphy, which undermined the validity of the SEC's request for a deterrent. The question of whether or not their demand was warranted was raised by Murphy. On the other hand, Murphy is skeptical and has some qualms regarding how the case circumstances should be construed. According to him, the statement made by the Second Circuit and included in the CBB objective was misunderstood as a status update on the damage that Ripple caused concerning the assertion that there are no victims and no disgorgement. The limited authority of the Securities and Exchange Commission is proven by the commission that was founded by a district court. The district court judge viewed the judge's decision to label the case as having caused peccary injury which led to the establishment of the commission. How the reply brief does not give the SEC any information that could be in any way useful. The possibility that the SEC versus new litigation would establish a precedent for a financial obligation is a source of anxiety for Ammon. A judge or magistrate in response, Torres Murphy stated that the SEC might reject the request since there are not sufficient grounds for doing so. In the hope that the judge will acknowledge this lapse and the SEC's position about disgorgement, Attorney Jeremy Hogan emphasized the need to obtain approval from the appellate court before bringing up instances of this nature. Ripple's putative violations of securities law, which were primarily linked with the circulation of unregistered XRP currency, were the primary reason why the disgorgement was the appropriate course of action. Specifically, these violations were brought about by Ripple's intention to issue further unregistered Bitcoin assets through its newly implemented organizational structure. Right? The Securities and Exchange Commission is the organization that maintains the necessity of an injunction to prevent such violations in the months and years to come. A popular cryptocurrency website known as CryptoGeek thinks that the XRP issue may be nearing its conclusion now that the most recent information regarding Ripple's conflict with the SEC and its effect on prices has been made public. And this is because the court anticipated to reveal the final brief by the 20th of May, suggesting that a potential settlement with Ripple may take place shortly within the realm of decentralized finance. The XRP ledger eels is in a strong position to effectively manage a substantial transaction volume of $1 trillion. The day token is the only token that possesses a CTF token. Uh, it is the only XRP ledger DeFi token that is ranked among the top 10. A big increase in the value of the CTF token is possible. It is possible for it to quickly soar from 87 cents, even though it only accounts for a small fraction of XRP's overall market share. This is the case. Ripple Labs and the Securities and Exchange Commission are becoming increasingly upset as they continue to be involved in a legal battle around XRP. Even though the Securities and Exchange Commission is requesting a fine of $2 billion, the most recent movie suggests that the court is more likely to not grant the request. The Securities and Exchange Commission bases its argument on a problematic precedent. The assertions made by the Securities and Exchange Commission are contested by professionals in the legal field. As an example, James Murphy, the attorney who is representing Ripple, has stated that the Securities and Exchange Commission relies on a weak court case to support its assertion that investors have experienced losses. Additionally, the Securities and Exchange Commission asserts that Ripple fraudulently increased the price of XRP, which was detrimental to investors because it prevented them from receiving the discounts that were initially anticipated. Even an update on the damage that Ripple has caused about the assertion that there are no victims and that there is no discouragement being experienced, even though the Securities and Exchange Commission based its decisions on the introduction of coins on a determination that was reached by a uh, district court SEC 
that found the pecuniary injury criterion that was satisfied when a stock price was the SEC's response brief does not give anything notable. According to Jeremy, a uh, lawyer, the Securities and Exchange Commission does not maintain any kind of transparency in the operations that it engages in. One is left wondering about the complaint that the government has lodged against Ripple as a result of the difficulties that have been brought up. These inquiries are founded on a shaky basis, and there is not enough evidence to support the accusations that the judge has mentioned. A court document that was made not too long ago reveals that Torres is more likely to disagree with the sentence that the SEC has imposed against Ripple in response to Ripple's assertion that it ought to pay a lower amount of fines. The Securities and Exchange Commission is taking action. Torres is anticipated to decline the fine that has been imposed. According to the opposing motion that Ripple submitted a month ago, the Securities and Exchange Commission stated that Ripple needs to pay fines of around $2 billion for selling XRP to institutional investors rather than to individual investors. It was contended by the company that uh, the amount ought to be closer to $10 million. Even though the proposed penalty was substantial, the Securities and Exchange Commission stated in a filing that was made public on Tuesday that it would encourage other crypto asset issues to violate Section 5 by making it a remarkably lucrative endeavor. As a result, investors would be deprived of the disclosures that Congress mandates as a simple cost of doing business. Because both parties are remaining steadfast in their positions, a decision will likely be made within the next few months. Even though the SEC and Ripple Labs are getting closer to the end of their legal struggle, the SEC is not going to back down from its position because the Securities and Exchange Commission rejected Ripple's position that the business had behaved in good faith and that there should be no uncertainty regarding the regulatory status of XRP and its final brief that was filed during the appellant phase of the trial the regulatory body drove be home the point that the court had already rejected Ripple's defense because it was based on fair notice if the appropriate authorities have not properly notified the party in question of the regulatory standards that are in place, then this defense argues that the party cannot be held accountable. Uh, for a breach of the agreement, the American Securities and Exchange Commission has reaffirmed its conviction that Ripple may once again breach securities laws in the future. This is even though the appellate brief states that Ripple made an effort to minimize its liability by emphasizing the fact that it has been working closely with the Securities and Exchange Commission as EC ever since the initial coin offering is in 2013. However, uh, the second one makes the point that according to the law, even if Ripple has not committed any violations since the year 20,120, there is still a risk that they will occur again. This is the case even if Ripple has not committed any violations since that year. Despite Ripple's objections, the Securities and Exchange Commission ultimately concludes that injunctions are still required to avoid future violations. Given the information that has been provided, trading advice is not intended to be provided. Conducting independent research and speaking with an experienced professional are two things that we strongly recommend doing before making any decisions on investments. Any investments that are made based on the information that is presented on this website are not subject to any responsibility.